Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's a really great privilege to be here today. Um, it's a bit loud, maybe. And uh, it's, uh, it's amazing to see just so many people in one room that are actually out there making a difference and touching the lives around us and the environment and the communities we live in. And so it is a really great privilege to talk to you today. You can, from up here, you can really see the different um, stages of, of non-profit representation, you know, those of you that have just started and are all excited to get out there today and, you know, take this information, those of, and right through to those of you that are probably looking for the pharmaceutical convention next door for the free Valium samples. So <laughs> you've been in this industry for probably anything longer than 10 days by now, so. Um, I think what I must just state up front is that it's very important that probably the, the, the name of my presentation should be changed on how not to. Um, the reason why there's a disclaimer there is because you need to know that uh, the information that I have is not based on great, on great knowledge and book knowledge. It really comes from how not to do these things. Um, and there's probably people in this room today that has got a lot more knowledge about these things than I do. So um, hopefully I can just make you look forward to lunch and, uh, and just touch on some of these things. And a lot of it really has already been spoken about to you. want to touch on a lot of those things. And so um, if there's any information afterwards that you'd like to know, then um, I'm also glad to, to help out with that. I think for me one of the most important things in the... 12, 13 years I've been in the nonprofit industry is just the it's just the challenges that we are facing as nonprofits out there. And I'm, I'm talking specifically about the the smaller NGOs. Um, I think the, the the smaller NGOs, the startup guys, don't quite face the same challenges as the big the big names out there, uh, the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund, and you know those. It's it's a lot easier when you're at that level than it is when you start up at the bottom here. And one of the things that I've always struggled with is the is the concept that an NPO is not a business. And so I have a bit of a background in, in, in the corporate world myself. And so it's always been very important to me that there is an understanding of why an NPO should be run as a business. Now, don't get this wrong. The reason why you are here today is because you have probably had this great desire to start up something. There's a need. Um, is there anyone here that felt that this is a good job opportunity? <laughs> great. <laughs> because you're in the wrong place. <laughs> This is the worst job in the world. <laughs> this job sucks. <laughs> um, but if it's something that you feel passionate about, then this is something that you can really make a difference in. And that is what we see. That is why the scales are, are so sometimes a bit more balanced, is because there are people like you out there that are just punting away, slogging through, making it work out there because it's something you honestly believe in. But a typical NGO or NPO or NPC, as it's called these days, would look like this. It's a small one-man operation. So about 50 of you came together at a dinner party and decided this is a good idea to start food gardens for the poor. And let's leave our corporate jobs and go and do this. This usually starts with one person. Um, and I'm very glad to see that there's a lot of male representation here. Um, I must say, I'm, I'm, I'm a typical white Afrikaans male, born in the free state. And uh, for a long time, I found it very difficult to find anyone else in the industry um, that was doing the kind of work I was doing, getting involved with, um, with children um, out in the sticks. And, um, and so it's great that there's a bit of a spread of that. But usually they start up with one small, one small person that just wants to do something great, starts realizing that they can make a difference, and in the next moment that need grows and it grows and grows, and the next moment they just don't know what on earth is going on, and they're the ones needing the Valium. It's driven by passion, not knowledge. Um, maybe you know how to cook, and therefore you start something small, and you send out a meal there, and you see the difference it makes, and it starts being a passion. But it's not necessarily knowledge. It's not the knowledge of how to set up this big thing that's going to be able to drive itself. The need, of, the, the need outside the organization is, I want to say often, but I think it's always bigger than the need inside the organization. It's, w w when I talk about when, you, when you're standing there in your kitchen and you are stirring the pot, you don't think about the need that you have right now. You, you, you often don't think about the electricity that you have to pay in able to do this. You are thinking about there's hungry people out there and they need to be fed. And that's, that, that's kind of what, um, where the need is based. It's often focused on the now. There's a need now. The need is not... The need's not coming, and very few, very few organizations can actually look, have the time to sit and say, what is, well, what is the need going to be in five years' time? And so I'm going to start planning that I'm going to give up my job in five years' time so that I can take care of this need in five years. There's a need right now. There's something that's touched your heart right now, and that's where you're starting with it. And you have limited financial resources. Um, I have... very I've, And there are people that, that manage to do this where there's... Uh, a spouse that managed to support this and you can start doing this, but at some point it just gets to a place where there's very limited financial resources to do this work. Now the